Hello and welcome to the Horticulturalists. I'm Stephen Ryan. And I am Matthew Lucas. And we post a video every week. So why not press the subscribe button and the alert button and then you'll be up to date with what we do every week. Indeed, indeed. And if you have a burning horticultural question for Stephen Ryan, put it in the comments below and we will try and answer it every Monday in our 60 second shorts. Yes, and don't forget to tell me where you're from because it does help a lot. And if we have triggered a burning desire to learn more about horticulture, you might want to think about... Joining the Royal Horticultural Society of Victoria. Yes. And you don't necessarily have to be Victorian. We allow others in as well. I have heard, though, the patron is very tricky. Oh, yes. Me. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. Anyhow, there's a little bit of self-aggrandising going on. Enough and that's housekeeping. Enough. What yep. are we doing today, Stephen? All right. Well, some weeks ago, we did a video on succulent euphorbias mm. which went a little bit mad people got quite excited apparently so that was quite good we decided we'd engage with another group of this vast genus of some 2000 species yes. and look at some of the slightly more cold tolerant shrubby and perennially euphorbias that will show up in nurseries and gardens and things as garden plants yes so might not be as collectible or clickbaity as mm. the rare uh, deciduous yeah, succulent, uh, succulent yeah. ones that we looked at before anyway but they are beautiful and i have always loved this one so we should just spin the camera around and begin yes what a good idea all right stephen now <laughs> yes. it's all about you you're in yes, the shop yes, yes tell me everything firstly this is massive yes this is not for the tiny garden no, i have to say nor for the fearful <laughs> yes <laughs> yes it's a, it's a big beast this, this is, is euphorbia lambii mm. or lambii of horticulture uh it could be euphorbia bergiana but anyhow it's grown well in australia under the name of lambii so i guess if you're looking for it use that name mm. but be aware that it might not be the correct one and this one also comes from macronesia so this comes from that sort of area of the canary islands etc not micronesia Mi no, no. which is in the pacific and yeah. a completely different yeah. ball game <laughs> well it is i mean if it, if it came from micronesia uh, i would have to be in a more tropical climate you for a would. start yeah well are there any euphorbias there in the pacific islands look it's very possible although there's only one in new zealand so it's not renowned for its euphorbias whereas macronesia is, is. Yes, let's exactly. stick to that geography yeah, then. yeah so anyhow so lambii is just mildly frost tender if i get one or two degrees of frost it will cope well and a is little that bit what more... we're seeing here yeah that could be a little bit of frost damage in mm. there it does get knocked by it a bit mm. it becomes a very structural looking plant this is the thing i mean from a distance if you didn't look at yeah. the top it actually looks like a frangipani Yes, it's got quite thick stems. Mm. Uh, the overall shape of the plant is quite conical, so it goes into a quite rounded form with age. Mm. But as a young plant, it tends to look like a standard. And I have literally last weekend saw a standard when I was just asking Stephen about it, and it was like a lollipop. It was a stick and... Pfft. Yeah. And, a, and, a bush. Yeah. and that will have been a young euphorbia lambii which yeah. is what this one looked like when i first planted it yeah uh, i find this self seeds like there's no tomorrow oh. so i'm forever pulling out unwanted seedlings and i just love it i like it sort of slightly gray green foliage it's mm. limey heads of flowers its flowers last for ages and even when there's no flowers on it it's still a very interesting structural plant it's very sculptural and despite the fact it's not it looks like a succulent yeah, look, at, I would say it's almost semi-succulent because it mm. does have very thick stems on it, yeah. uh, which are obviously uh, able to conserve quite a bit of moisture. Mm. So it's pushing towards being a succulent euphorbia. Now, how old is your specimen? Because we'll take close-ups of the trunk. It looks large, gnarly and old. How yeah. old is it? Well, guessing a little bit because I don't remember exactly when I planted it, mm. but it would have to be 15 to 20 years old. Okay. Is this kind of its range? Is this as big as it's going to get? Or could well, it get I hope bigger? so. Because <laughs> if it gets much bigger than this, I'm, I think we'll have to move out. Yeah, I think it's getting close because certainly over the last couple of years, it hasn't really sent up a lot of vigorous growth. Right. It tends to be shorter, sort of clumpier growth. So I think it's getting to its sort of fairly maximum size now. Could we use the S word, senesce? It could be going to. Uh, I mean, some of these things don't live forever. I was say, yeah, what's this lifespan? If it's yeah. about 20 years old. Yeah, look, I, I'm not sure that it's going to last for that much longer, but then some of these things will sort of linger 
<laughs> for decades. And but not but, looking their best. Yeah, but they, like the so, rest of us. Yeah, they've lost oh, their garden context. Lost really. their bloom. <laughs> yes, exactly. So if this becomes gnarly and awful, which it could do over the next few years, there are plenty um, of seedlings. There will be plenty of seedlings coming up. I can always pull out the original plant, mm. and within a very short time, I will have a replacement going. So it is very, very easy. Yep. So there you go, Euphorbia lambii or possibly Bergurana. I think I like lambii as a name at least, it's, yes. it's easy. And just um, care and conditions, it's in full sun. Yeah, and good drainage and yeah. full sun are the two major requirements. And it is drought tolerant? Oh yes, yes. Again, like a lot of the um, new, uh, Canary Island flora, if mm. it gets too dry, it will just shed a whole pile of leaves. Mm. So it'll become almost deciduous if it gets dry, dry, dry. Interesting. So and. Then then it'll bounce back again as soon as the rains come in. Now, my eye is falling down. Down, yes. Here we have another one. So I might just change the camera and look at the other euphorbia yes. that's lurking below. Why don't we do just that? So Stephen, this is a different euphorbia, is it yes, not? Yes, it is indeed. And one of the more commonly seen in gardens. Yep. Uh, and again, there is some uh, confusion with names, unfortunately. <laughs> but they could all be classed as euphorbia caracius. Yep. But there is a subspecies called Euphorbia caracius subspecies wolfenii. Now, when you've got both in the garden, they tend to cross-pollinate. And mm. I would say this one is a hybrid between the two yeah. because straight wolfenii has yellow, uh, yellowy green flowers in the middle mm -hmm. and straight caracius, the non-subspecies, yeah has almost blacky brown flowers yes. in the green bracts behind. Yes. This one has got soft brown, coppery coloured flowers. And I would say, without too much fear of contradiction, <laughs> that I actually have a hybrid here. So we'll show people the, the difference is small, but it is definite. And yes. this one is intermediate. So I'd say it's a hybrid. I started off with a named clone that had big yellow flowers, which made it clear wolf any eye. Mm -hmm. And I started off with one called Portuguese velvet, which was a straight Caracas form. And of course I've had both in the garden for years. So now, oh, the parentage has got a little bit muddled, but there you go, what can I say? There we are. Uh, now, obviously this is a much shorter grower. Yes, uh, the Euphorbia caracius forms tend to work more like a, an evergreen perennial. Yep. So when they finish flowering, mm. you need to prune the flowered stem right back to as low as you can go. Yep. And in the meantime, there will be new shoots coming up from below, yep. which will be next year's flowers. Yep. So you alternate the, the wood. So you just mm. refurbish the plant every year. Mm. They don't live forever. They tend to go on for five or six years and then they get a bit woody at the bottom and you better to pull them out. Mm -hmm. They generally send up lots of baby seedlings mm -hmm. uh, and so therefore you've always got some replacements yep. in material of whether they're one subspecies or the other. Yeah. And I guess the only thing I need to warn people about is they have really toxic sap Yes. So wear gloves while you're pruning them back and be careful you don't get euphorbia juice in your eye. <laughs> it is just awful. I can vouch for that. Oh, but you've lived to tell the tale. I have lived to tell the tale, but it was excruciatingly painful for quite some time. Really? So yes, if you get the white sap in your eyes, it is a very risky thing to do. So Great. treat euphorbias with a little bit of respect, folks. Yeah, I'm not going near it. But now, are we going to look at that one over yeah, there? Yeah, that one over there is probably true wolf any eye. As okay. I said, this one's probably a hybrid. And we'll have a look at Portuguese velvet as well, which I've got some fair dinkum plants of still out in the back garden. Fair dinkum for those outside of Australia. <laughs> yeah, it means the real one. The real one. Okay, yes. let's go and have a look. All right. Now this one looks to me like your classic perennial bed euphorbia. Oh yes. What uh, a fabulous flower head. And this one is closer to the pure form. So it's very uh, green. It's very green inside. So the little flowers when they first come out are quite green. Yeah. It also has lovely big heads on it. And I'm sure the original plant I had in this border, which is long gone to God, was a named clone that I got seed of from England years mm. and years and years ago. I have to say the heads are beautiful, but I find the plant just as useful even when it's finished flowering and I've taken the flower stems out mm. for its nice handsome grey foliage in a nice big sort of moundy clump yeah. that it gives me for the rest of the year. Yeah. I, an observation though, it's a bit leggy. Is that because it's in a bit of shade? Well, I think it, it varies on not only where you're growing it, but mm. 
the individual plant sometimes will yeah. have a different form. And so there are much more compact ones. Mm. I mean, if you really want to, you can even buy variegated leafed ones now of the- <laughs> Who would want to do that? Of Euphorbia caracius. <laughs> There's a few different clones with variegated foliage lurking around. This one's got a bit leggy, but you've got to also remember that we've had two or three quite damp years. So it's been a lot of leggy growth on things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if we have a hotter, drier, normal summer, it will make the plants much more compact. Mm. So, as I was saying, sort of classic perennial bed, that is really how you would use this, isn't it? In a classical perennial bed. Although this isn't. Yeah, this is just a shrub border. Yeah. And it's just, it sort of at a home in either, mm. really. Uh, so it can give you an evergreen structural plant in a perennial border yeah. where perennials are going to be in general down for the winter yeah. or it can just be part of a mixed shrubby border yeah. and because it's evergreen as well the foliage is there when other deciduous plants are finished mm. so mine actually is working quite nicely with this purple leaf uh, sambucus the elderflower that's behind it which we have made an epic film about yeah well exactly so if you want to know more about elderflowers you probably should go on board and have a look at black lace and some of the other ones that i grow of those as well all right well this is fabulous these flower heads it's the size of a football it's yeah, massive yeah they are they're quite big and they can get there are really good huge selections of them mm. out there so uh, it does pay to be selective about which euphorbia caracius you get and then isolate it yes i, I would actually pick on one and just stick with <laughs> that unlike what one. i did because uh, <laughs> i wanted one of everything and now i've got this sort of hybrid swarm if you find a really good caracius or a really good wolf any eye that yeah. you particularly like stick, stick with it, it. yeah because <laughs> otherwise you'll have all sorts of stuff all right well let's go look at more in the garden all right all right, get a load of this one, Matthew. This is the most incredible euphorbia, I think, in my garden. Yes. And it is scented. I was going to say, I can smell honey. Yes. And in fact, it's a well-known euphorbia, loved by gardeners. Yes. Uh, and known as euphorbia mellifera, which means honey, honey scented. Wow. Um, and... And it's... If um, only you could smell that literally smells like honey. It does. And so that's something that you don't expect with euphorbias. No. Uh, if a Q Botanic Gardens is to be believed, it's now... They are. Euphorbia stigiana. Oh, that's uh, not as poetic. No, I, I think they should go back to mellifera. And yeah, this one comes from the Azores mm -hmm. and it could easily grow to five or six metres tall. Now so this, quite tree-like. This is on one of your, one of your drive entryways. Yes. And it's always struck me as being this enormous shrub and it almost looks like a rhododendron. Yeah, well, it's got that sort of look. The leaves yeah. tend to radiate towards the end of the stems, yeah. much like a rhododendron does. And then you get these big sort of soft orangey coloured yeah. flowers. They're, they're, as the flowers mature, they go that sort of weird sort of coppery orange colour. And it's a marvellous plant. Uh, like a lambii, which it's closely related to, uh, it is inclined to sell seed around a bit. Yeah. So I pull out seedlings that come up where I don't want them. I wouldn't um, have a problem with that. It's well, beautiful. I'm sure that this wasn't planted. <laughs> <laughs> I, this one came up of Where its own did it accord. Come from? What do you uh, mean? I mean? Well, I planted one somewhere, but not right, here. Okay. And this is a seedling that's popped up, and I thought that seems appropriate. Well, it's so I the just best left it. Spot. Yeah. yeah. So it's fabulous. It's sort of on the corner of your driveway, as you said, and the, and the main road, mm. and people can appreciate it as they walk down the street. I can appreciate it as I drive home. So yes, I'm very fond of my honey-scented euphorbia. So it's from the Azores. Similar climatically, it needs. The Likes a sunny uh, aspect, it's inclined to grow a bit thin and wispy if it's in the shade. Yeah, this uh, is in full sun. It requires a little bit more water or does better with a little bit more water than uh, Lambii from the Canaries would. Yeah. So I wouldn't put it in the driest spot you can find in the garden. And it's mildly cold um, sensitive. I mean, if we get really heavy frosts, uh, it will burn. Yeah, yeah. But it, I mean, it doesn't look as succulent like as Lambia. No, no, no. This has got far less water holding capacity in the stems yeah so hence not being as drought tolerant there we go well i think we've got more to see yes we have let's go and have some look at some more squatting on the drive stephen yes well we've gone from the sublime to the ridiculous mm. and we're now going to engage with one of the smaller euphorbias that i grow in the garden at mm. home 
and it's one of the European species and it's Euphorbia cypericeus. Meaning, from Cyprus? I think it's got more to do with the fact that it has cypress-like leaves. Oh, oh right. <laughs> so, so, I think. Uh, that's, actually, you've thrown me now. I'll have to look that up later. But anyhow, this is a little completely herbaceous species. Mm. So it dies right down in the winter. Mm. It comes up with its little limey flowers in the spring. Mm. The foliage in the summer is grey-green. Mm. And in the autumn, when it's about to die down, all the leaves go yellow and orange. Beautiful. So it has good autumnal colour. Mm. Now, it's a thug. It's run all the way up along the side of my driveway. Uh, so it's not for the timid gardener because it has rhizomes in it and it sort of runs. None of our gardeners are timid. Yeah, well, I'm hoping not. But I have planted it here because it's got a shrubby border behind it. Mm. So that's shady back there and it won't grow back far into the shade. Mm. So, and the car tyres will deal with anything that comes out too far into the, into the actual driveway. Yeah. So that's keeping it in sort of some sort of order. Mm. But be warned if you plant Cypericeus, there's also a lovely burgundy leaf version of it called Fens Ruby, which is well worth looking out for. Mm. But they're all about as vicious as each other as far as taking off is concerned. So mm. it does need to be used with discretion, but I think it's a charming little euphorbia. It is fabulous. And we've got the three that we were looking at. We have this, the small yep. one, the... the Yes, the Caracius the form, and, and then Lambii. Lambii right up behind us. So it's a symphony of green. Oh, but let's go and look at something that isn't. Yes, good idea. Well, Stephen, the first thing that strikes me about this is the colour of the bit in the middle. I don't Which want to is, say flower in case Well, it's no, not. the bit in the middle is in fact the flower. Mm. This is um, Euphorbia caracius yep. uh, in a proper caracius -y form because mm. it has the dark coloured flowers. And I originally imported the seed as a cultivar called Portuguese velvet. Yes. I'm not sure it stayed pure, but it's close. It's um, now massive than velvet. Yeah, well, it could be, it could be. So it has smallish heads, quite tight. Mm. Um, the flower it's, or the bracts behind the flowers are slightly furry, hence velvet. Oh, I see. Now, let's, we'll come in closely and, and have a look. So, tell me about the structure, because we've been through the whole bract flower thing, but yeah. describe the euphorbia flower to me. All right, well, the true flower is a little browny black bit in the middle. You can see the pollen and everything in it yeah. as well. Yeah. And it's surrounded by a large green bract. Yes. And so the showiest part of most euphorbia flowers is in fact the bracts and not the flowers themselves, right. which are nearly always quite small and sometimes minute. In the case of this one, the flowers are really good contrasting colour. Yeah. So it actually works quite well um, uh, as a garden plant because of the contrast of the flower and the green bract. Now, what's the furry green bit below the flower? That's a seed pod forming because all of these flowers are multiple flowers within the one bract. Ah. So that will have been a flower that came out earlier mm. and it's now turning into a seed pod and it's still got another flower there and it'll have another one beside it. So you might get three, four, maybe five flowers in behind or inside of each bract. Oh, how beautiful. So and there it, you go. It is striking that sort of velvety velvety brown yeah and then comparison to the the honey one which is very orange and again really stood out and it was a beautiful contrast yep. same conditions it's in full sun yeah full sun good drainage mm -hmm. uh not particularly moisture hungry but does better if it gets a little bit of water treat it in the same way as the other caracius forms just take the flowered stems right down when they're finished yes. and leave the ones that haven't flowered which will be next year's blooms there you go it is absolutely beautiful yeah gorgeous plant well, Stephen, I have loved our romp through larger and smaller <laughs> euphorbias. <laughs> yes. I think my favourite is the honey. I had no idea that it was going to smell so sweet and yeah, beautiful. It is. It's a gorgeous thing. Because I have to say, the flowers look as though they're going to smell a little bit off, like an you'd sort arum. of ex Yeah, you'd sort of expect that, wouldn't you? A bit but, of a yeah. rotten fleshy, but no. No, it's got a lovely perfume. Yeah. And I have to say, this has been a very small romp through an exceedingly large group of plants. You can romp so, for as long as you yeah. want, but we've only romped a little bit. Yeah, so they're mainly the, just the ones I have in my own garden. Yeah. Uh, there are masses of other species and I'm sure people will get in touch with it and say, why didn't you do this one or that one or whatever? You know, this is my favorite. Uh, I'm sure that will happen, but it's just to remind people that euphorbias are great garden plants mm. and we should be using them where we can. And we have um, included euphorbias in other videos. Now, one was when we were with Alexandra and we were looking at a, 
a perennial bed in a garden on Mount Macedon. I'll link that. Yes. And then we also featured one in your nursery that was named after a woman. What was that Oh, called? yes, Miss Rob's Bonnet, uh, Euphorbia amygdaloides robbii. Yes, now um, I can't remember which film that was, but I will remember and find out, and I'll drop that link yeah. below as well. Good. So there you go. <laughs> that adds another couple. Uh, and, of course, the one in the border was, for you especially, a variegated <gasps> one. Variegated one. Anyway, <laughs> so we will acknowledge the variegated friends amongst our Euphorbia yeah. family. Yep. Now, if you want to know what we're doing, next week you'll have to hit subscribe yes please do and don't forget that if you want me to answer your burning horticultural queries stick it in the comment below tell me where you're from and within 60 seconds i will try and answer your question for well, you. well not within 60 seconds of it being written but... no no <laughs> but in 60 seconds i will manage to answer your you question. know what we're talking about and we do post every friday so that is why you need to hit subscribe to find out what we're doing next week and we look forward to seeing you then goodbye all